bullet. Everybody, that time again, Fulhamish preferred 11 ahead of Wednesday night's relegation scrap down, at the, down on the south coast away at Southampton. Obviously, it's a big game for both teams, arguably, probably a bigger game for Southampton more than us because they've still got a chance of survival, whereas our survival hopes are diminishing rather quickly week after week. And after Friday's result, I don't really see any too much light at the, end, at the end of the survival tunnel, really. But without further ado, we'll jump on straight into it and we're going to go off and go with. And people might, not, people might not agree with it, but I'll give my reasons for why. Uh, I'll go Sergio Rico in goal, and look, I know he didn't cover himself in too much glory in in Friday's defeat, of, of course, but um, we're better than the out injured the rest of the season, and only really Fabri is our only other senior goalkeeper as backup. I don't really think that Rico will get dropped. Look, he made a couple of mistakes, didn't he? The initial punch that led to the controversial equaliser was a... Uh, a poor bit, a poor bit of judgment for him, especially when he wasn't even challenged when the corner came into the box. He had a lot of time to catch the ball. There was no West Ham player even going up for the header against him, so it wasn't as if he had anyone challenging against him to give him the choice to punch the ball. And um, I noticed a couple of times as well from set pieces, set pieces, in fact, that he um, kept pushing Hernandez in the back, and Hernandez kept going down. And if Lee, if and that, actually, if Lee Mason had actually spotted that, or the officials officials had, then it would at least on more than one occasion we would have given away a couple of penalties. So it was definitely a, a risky approach from Rico. And I hope he doesn't do that on, on Wednesday because he might have got away with it and he might think he can do it again. But uh, different referee, I think it's Andre Mariner on, off the top of my head who's officiating on Wednesday night. So he might be a bit more clued up, especially from set pieces than Lee Mason was. So uh, he's just got to be careful, isn't he? I mean, he did, he did make a couple of good saves in the, in the second half at least. But um, yeah, I'll go with him in goal. But he didn't cover himself in too much glory on, on Friday. But as I said... Fabry, I don't think, gets really anywhere near him in terms of getting a going goal between now and the end of the season. So, for the time being, I'd go with Rico in goal. The back four, again, it's an interesting one. We went with a back four on Friday night. It seemed as, a, as though we went with a 4-4-1-1, a which then turned into a 4-4-2, really, with Babel joining Mitrovic up front, which, uh, in my opinion, didn't really work, especially at times when we were looking to try and break in the first half. It was just picking the ball up on our own half and just lumping it into space, expecting one of, either Mitrovic or Babel to run onto it. And... Nine times out of ten, a direct balls didn't go to where we wanted them to, and ended up going right up the other end of the pitch and effectively being useless. So um, I'd go with the back four again. I think it we we are better with a back four, and you get more attacking impetus with us with a back four. So I'd go probably with if depending on if, if he's fit or not, Cyrus Christie at right back because I just don't really rate Dennis Adoy as a full back. I think he's much more better in the, in the centre. I think at full back he makes too many silly little decisions, too many silly tackles. Well, he did that a couple of times in the. Uh, in Friday's defeat, we made a couple of poor tackles. I think there was one on the halfway line which he bundled into somebody. I think it was uh, was it Hernandez or someone like that. I think he bundled into him quite. It was very clumsy. There was no need for it really. But I'd go with Christie at right back. Centre half, I'd go with Harvard Nordvite. I was actually quite impressed with Nordvite. I felt like he was a no nonsense, solid type of defender who's uh, generally quite a cool customer. As I said, no nonsense, dealt with what he had to do. And if we had a better partner next to him, I think them two would be a, a, a better partner. Sorry, next to Harvard would be a. Uh, a decent pairing, but when he's playing with Tim Ream on Friday, it was never going to be brilliant, was it? So um, I'd probably push Adoy back to centre-half again. I don't think he's been terrible at centre-half. I think he's much more effective at centre-back than he would be at right-back, but I could see why he was put at right-back, because he has got a bit of pace about him, and he can get forward, but I just think he's probably better off at centre-back. And left-back's an interesting one, but I'd probably... I'll probably go Joe Bryan there, and look, again, he didn't cover himself in too much glory, I didn't think, on Friday night, but... Probably give him, I'd prefer him over Maxime Lamarche on that left back. I think with Joe Bryan, you'll get that little bit more um, attacking width from you. You get him, you get the width from him. He's a good, he's got a good delivery on the ball. I know he doesn't do it enough consistently, but when he can, when he gets one on the money, he does get a good crossing sometimes. So that's probably why I'd go with him there. I know he's, defensively he's not fantastic, but I don't think the Martian's too much. I don't think the Martian's much better either. So I'd probably go with Joe Bryan there. I think the midfield two stays the same with Seri and Chambers. I was quite baffled as to why Seri came off at half-time on Friday. I felt he um, was he played quite well on Friday night in the first half. I feel like he did the basics well. And I, I was very surprised as to why he came off. I think, you know, when you brought on Anguissa in the second half, who didn't do much at all, really, did he? I mean, and it was a quite a baffling substitution. I think Ranieri's substitutions, again, they're, more, they're so questionable, aren't they? And they're just very strange, aren't they? So I'll go with them two in the midfield with Seri and Chambers, as normal. Uh, the front three, I'd go with uh, Ryan Babble on the right. Took his goal well on Friday night, but he should, probably should have had one a bit about five minutes earlier. Went through one on one as we know. Tried to sit Fabianski down. Never going to work against Fabianski. 
in my opinion, one of the best keepers outside of the top six, as many people like to say. Best keeper outside of the top six is always that um, that sort of argument going around on social media. But I think he's definitely one of them. And he done very well not to be fooled by the attacking uh, threat there of trying to be sat down and chipped over. So I think Babel will hopefully get to the start there. I thought, on the whole, as I said, took his goal well. But he did, he did okay. And in the middle of that, I'd go with Tom Kearney. He... Ten, yeah, on Friday night he went. He played on the right side, didn't he? In that four-man midfield, which didn't really work. I think I just find it so confusing as to why Ranieri still is persistent on playing him out wide. It just doesn't work. He just hasn't got the. He's just not. He's, he's just not a wide player, is he? Let's just let's be honest. He's not a wide player. He's much more effective through the middle. And I, this is how I personally use him. I'd go in the middle with, there on the left-hand side. I'd, I would go with Ryan Sessegnon. Look, I know he had a poor game on Friday and he didn't do well at all. But look. That was his first bad game in a while for us, and everyone has bad days at the, at the office. I think Friday night was just generally a bad night, and we can put a line through it. I'll be more than willing to give him another chance on the left-hand side. If he performs poorly again, then maybe considering dropping him, but I wouldn't axe him after one poor performance. I think if he plays after one poor performance, I'd keep him in there to keep his confidence levels up and show him that there's another chance there for him, and hopefully he can take this chance. But... Um, it wasn't a great performance from on Friday night, we all know that, but I'd give him another chance, as I said. And obviously going for the middle, I'd go Mitrovic. Again, didn't get too much service on Friday night, and this is the problem with Mitrovic. He's a, he's a striker who needs service, of course he does. And for him to be fully effective, needs balls into him, balls into the box, coming out from out wide. And the only way we're going to do that is if we have good players, good quality in the whip to do that. And I think that 4-4-2, four, that, well, that four, four, whatever it was, that, that just didn't work. And I hope we don't use that again um, on Wednesday. I hope... I'd love to see us go with the formation I've just gone with there. The four, in, four, four at the back, two in midfield, and then your three in behind the striker. I think that would be very that that'd probably suit us better. But we all know what Ranieri, we all know, we all know what Ranieri's like. He probably won't do that. He'll probably be stubborn and stick with what he thinks is best, and it has, hasn't worked, has it? But we just got to see how we go on, on Wednesday night. I'm not predicting too much of a big result, but look, we just got to take it as it comes and just see where we go. If you didn't enjoy the um, Pro 11, guys, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to Fulham as well if you're new. And yeah, see you all for the next Preferred Eleven in the build-up to our huge West London derby against Chelsea. Take care. Bye-bye. Come on,